Hello, everybody. Welcome to Live Jerry Cherry episode 73. And in today's video, we're going to learn some legato exercises and techniques. And um, this legato practice is really great. It's the opposite of staccato. And um, so some really cool stuff we can do with um, legato. But first, what I want to do is, um, you know, just talk about your hands and um, stretching first. Before you do any kind of real physical exercises like this, you really want to um, relax your hands and you want to stretch them out. We're not going to go through the whole process of stretching, but a quick way is just to take your fingers and just pull them back as far as you can without breaking them. <laughs> And just hold them there for like, you know, 10, 12 seconds or so. And um, just do each finger. And I actually do both hands as well, even if you're not, if you're just picking with this hand. Um, so it's, it's good practice. Stretch them out. Stretch all your hands out. Relax them. And there's a lot of good exercises as well as far as stretching your wrist and everything goes. And, you know, perhaps I'll make a video on that. But just check out some other wrist and hand stretching exercises before you play. I do it before I play, before I practice, before I play any shows or gigs, just to relax the hands because when you put a lot of pressure on them, you don't want to feel any pain. And something like this, this kind of legato, where you're just there's a lot of repetition, you know, um, it can cause some damage to your hands, but you want to just practice and you, you don't want it to hurt. You want to just keep your hands as loose as possible, especially if you're trying to play um, with any kind of fluidity, fluidity all over the fretboard with legato, because that's what it's basically all about. It's trying to be real fluid. You're not executing, you're not hitting every note. You're doing a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs. So with that out of the way, um, you also want to consider positions, your hand positions and the way that they're you know, the way that you hold your hand on the fretboard. You know, a lot of times, I mean, you could do whatever you want, really, but a good technique would be to keep your fingers parallel with the frets. Keep your wrist out so that you can kind of maneuver your wrist to keep your hands in a good position. Because that'll keep your hands more relaxed as well. If you're kind of out of position and you're, yeah, you know, you're not using good technique. Your 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 fingers are more likely to cramp up, and um, you might cause some damage and uh, be in pain. So, okay, just keep that in mind. And um, okay, so check this out. <laughs> Get a little sound here. There's some distortion going on. So you want to mute the strings the best you can, especially if you're playing with distortion, which you can play with distortion or clean. It's, it's, um, both ways are really good. Hello, Tom G. So as always, I will put timestamps in the description so you can get right to the, the beginning of the lesson. But I want to just say hello to Tom real quick here in the chats. Hello, Tom. Hopefully everything is good. I'll give you a little round of applause. And, uh, find out what you're drinking this morning, this afternoon. If you had any coffee, is it a beer clock somewhere <laughs> on the planet? I got my coffee that uh, I used my new pour over coffee maker that I bought last week where you put the, um, the grains in the little funnel right there and uh, you pour hot water over it. And it just um, drips right into the, um, to the pot. And it's really good, it's, it's healthier for you. Um, less grains in there and um, kind of filters out a lot of the stuff in the coffee before you drink it, which is really good. So, I'm gonna talk about muting for legato. And as you can see, I have a lot of gain here. So if I didn't hold on to the strings, you'd have all this noise going on. And, and you know, you probably know this already, but I'm just gonna emphasize it a little bit. Where I have my hand right here over the bridge. 
and so it's muting all the noise. And that really comes into play when you're playing up the scales. So, and that's what we're gonna start today by doing this legato and all is well. Beer, 75 degrees, all right. That is awesome, 75 degrees. I think it's like that here in Brooklyn too. It's definitely warming up. But you can never tell, I haven't been out yet today and people are still wearing jackets. So, all right, so we're muting up here. And the way, the best way that I learned legato was actually by doing the opposite of legato and it's by picking every note. Because what winds up happening is you wind up picking and picking and picking, then after a while, because of that, your hand starts syncing up together. You know, because obviously you're, you're picking every note, like... So, your left hand and your right hand are, are you know, connecting with each other. So... But like I was saying, what happens is, after a while, you may want to just kind of relax with the picking on the right hand and just kind of do some hammer-ons and some pull-offs. I see Kelly here in the chat. Hello. Can't stay, but wanted to say hello. Well, thank you very much for popping in, Kelly. Very, very sweet. Thank you very much. So, it's always a good idea to practice with a metronome, too. I don't have a metronome that you would hear, so I just, I'm just looping a drum machine right here on my uh, looper pedal, just so I can give you some quarter notes. And I think this is like 75 beats per minute on the quarter notes. One, two, three, four. And I started off by playing 16th notes going up any scale. Hi, Kelly. Bye, Kelly. So, okay. So, you could do that starting at a very low tempo, very slow tempo, and then just work your way up. You know, start 60, then go up to 65, 70, 75, and just get it real clean. But like I was saying, after a while, you'll start letting go of the picking, and you'll start doing more hammer-ons and pull-offs. And that's how I got my legato to be faster and smoother. So... Like, for instance, we'll start this drum machine again, and then we'll let go of the right hand, and we'll go. See? Now I'm not picking every note, I'm only playing, I'm only attacking the first note of each phrase of 16th notes. Check it out. Hello, Jamie. James. James Ross, I thought that was Jamie in there. I guess I was reading it wrong the whole time. Up, down. Well, if you were picking every note, you know, I would start with down strokes. Down, up, I'm alternate picking here. And then going down, I'm up stroking first. <laughs> Watching on TV, a small TV or a large 90 inch TV. But the idea is, is that when you pick every note, like I was saying, your, your left hand and your right hand get really connected. But after a while, you'll just wanna just play legato. So instead of picking every note, I'm doing it like this.
big. Nice. So, I'm playing. I'm not picking every note, but I'm only picking the ones that I have to attack so that they'll come through. Like the first note. And I'm hammering on the second note, hammering on the third note. And I'm attacking the fourth note because it's on a different string. Here, I'll put on this camera. So you can see this a little bit better. Right here. I'm hammering the first note. No, I'm picking the first note. Hammering the second, hammering the third. Hitting the fourth because it's on the A string. And then I'm hitting the second note here on the sixth string. And it'll, it'll start coming naturally if you're doing a lot of alternate picking practices. Then you'll find out there's, there's some areas. Some problem areas where you have to switch positions on your hands. Where I have to pick more notes just to get them to come out. Usually around this area, you'll, you'll find in different positions, wherever you're playing, there's always that place where you have to move your hands a little bit more, especially around the B string, where it's not as symmetrical as, say, right here. There's not as much hand movement. Right up here. See where it gets a little tricky? even hard. Okay. So, if you're enjoying that, please hit the like button, hammer on the subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. So we're playing some legato today, so we could sound super smooth. <laughs> now I'm showing off. Yeah, you're right. Stop me before I show off, please. So, um, let's see. Now, okay. One of the things here is we don't want to do this. I tend to mute a lot, a little bit more than I should. You know, I would back off on the muting and open it up, let it breathe, so to speak. Instead of, which sounds cool if that's what you want to do, but you don't want to always do that. So I'm just basically releasing my hand from the bridge and unmuting it a little bit. So if I'm muting and chugging it, or if I just re raise it a little bit, it's opening up. Muting. And you could find like a sweet spot in there. Because you have to mute it to keep it quiet, especially if you're playing up here or up here. If I didn't mute this over here and I just left it open and, and just played in this E position. So what's happening there? Hearing all the noise, you're hearing the E string, the A string, and the G string ringing out, basically. So basically, what I'm doing is I'm just muting them, right here, and I'm just releasing. I'm I'm lifting up my right hand enough so that I'm not muting the string that I'm playing on. If I'm playing on the high E here, all you hear is the high E. If I go too far down, it'll kill it. But I'm just just raising it enough. Now when I go down to the B, I'm backing off a little bit more, so now the only strings that are really ringing out are the E and the B string. Now the G string. Now 
Now all three of them. So good practice to do that is when you're playing the alternate picking going up. I'm trying my hardest to really just mute all these strings from ringing out. Muting all these low strings, keeping them quiet, if you want to keep them quiet. <laughs> Some people just don't care. But when you're playing and you hear a lot of noise going on there, yeah, thank you, Jim. I know it's, it's an important thing that not many people talk about, and that's the muting of the strings. And if I left it wide open, Hear that? Not quite though. It's quiet. If it wasn't, it would sound like this. No, I'm muted. By practicing with a metronome, you'll be in time, number one. <laughs> and uh, number two, with your alternate picking, once you get to a speed where it's just too fast for you to, to connect, you'll find out that you know, it's easier just to hit one note instead of all of them. Like if I was going, doing something like this. Here I'm playing three notes. If I hit one, it's just easier. Just go. You go. If I double that, it's like. Look how much work. If I hit it one time, it's only. Like Hello, David Belcher. Good to see you. And good morning, everyone in the chat. So we're doing legato, and um, I just love it. I kind of learned this naturally. It was just easier to play across the, the fretboard, just hitting one note. I would hit one note. Instead of playing every note. Which has a sound. But it sounds different than this. <laughs> Trying to get it clean here. We need to practice. So hopefully you're getting something out of that. If you do, if you are, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I like good stuff. And uh, so one thing to keep in mind is to have like um, strong pull-offs. Because going up, you're doing hammer-ons. I'm, I'm basically going up the major scale here. Pick any scale you want. You could do the the uh, pentatonic scale. Super sticker, nine ninety nine from Jamie Ross. James Ross, hippo character going to really hippo character going really fast on this chair, propelling the chair across the room. <laughs> that is so cool. Thank you very much for the super sticker. You know what? That's the first 
super sticker or first super chat that I've gotten so far. <laughs> um, you know, you have you need like a certain amount of subscribers, and I think it's a thousand. I reached a thousand subscribers a few weeks ago, so I'm eligible for super chats and all that good stuff. And uh, so, thank you for that. That's really, really, really cool of you, James, for the uh, super chat, super sticker, which is a little different. There's a sticker which I don't see, and I think I should see it, right? But uh, maybe I will when it, on the playback or something. But I know what the stickers, super stickers, is all about. And thank you. That's very, very cool. And uh, David was saying George Lynch was a massive learner. Yeah, he sure is. That's really, really cool. Really, really cool. Love George Lynch. I was just listening to, uh, I was doing a disco show last night, and everyone loves disco and the disco night, of course. And of course, I broke out the dock, and I was <laughs> making everybody listen to Lightning Strikes. <laughs> you know, playing devil's advocate there. So, um, okay. But uh, going up the scale, you're, you're basically doing hammer-ons. So I'm hammering on. Picking one note. Hammer on, hammer on, picking. Hammer on, hammer on, pick. Hammer on, hammer on. Actually, I'm not. I'm going up this Mixolydian scale. Hammer on, hammer on, hammer on. Pick, hammer on, hammer on. But on the way down, I'm doing pull-offs. I'm picking the first note. So there's two pull-offs here. And I took two great guitar lessons from Joel Hoekstra, guitar player for Whitesnake. And um, he emphasized these pull-offs going down, which I never really emphasized them. And it's, uh, it's really important because you take your pinky and you're basically pulling off from your pinky. Like if you're, even if you were doing this, you're playing this pentatonic scale. You're basically doing a pull off. So you, you have to do that same, have, have that same mentality when you're pulling off even from a, a half step right here, from your pinky to your, your third finger. So, see I'm doing this, I'm, I'm emphasizing this pull off here. From my pinky to my third finger. And then from my third finger to my pointer. So the stronger you get these pull-offs, Unchain the Night, that's a great song. The stronger you can get these pull-offs, the cleaner your legato will sound. Because going up, there's no pull-offs, there's just hammer-ons. That's a trick that I learned from Joel Hoekstra. No matter where you're playing, try to emphasize the pull-offs. And most people think of pull-offs like, like Dave Murray of Iron Maiden, right? He does a lot of that stuff. It's the same thing if you're pulling off on a three note per string pattern. Which that would be a good practice too. Just to take your fingers, put them parallel with the string here. And pull off your pinky to your third finger. Then your third finger to your first finger. Tom G, you got to run. See you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out, Tom. Great to see you. All right. 
God. So. Now. Go back to here for a sec. So that really is a good practice. If you want to practice the pull-offs and just practice legato, just take simple things like this. Like little trills. Make them sound good everywhere. I first learned about this legato listening to Randy Rhodes because he did a lot of legato. Like. trying to keep it clean on the slow end here. All right, hopefully you're enjoying this. We got a little bit more here before I let you go and you can enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Okay, so thanks for hanging out with me. Here's a great little trick that I learned from a guitar player that I played with that I've known since I was a little kid. His name's Dave Scotts. And um, essentially what he, what he did was he would legato the first three notes and then pick the next three notes on, on a different string. Kind of like this. This is a great legato practice too. See, I'm just hammering on the first two notes I'm picking the first note here, hammer on, hammer on, and on the E string, I'm picking those three notes. So it sounds like this, this pattern. Keep going up the scale. Just shift it up to here. Not easy. And if you could do it in time, even better. I did it with this is just a uh, quarter notes at 75 beats per minute. Of course, I'm playing within the scale. So you're shifting. I'm playing within the A minor scale or C major. So I'm playing. So if you know the, the scale on each string, you're just basically going up like there's E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Same thing, B, C, D. Then you can just kind of take that. You're going through all the patterns going up, which leads me to the next thing here. If you're doing like a, a scale thing where you're doing three notes per string, you could do that same thing going up three notes per string. So if I was playing the major scale, do 
do the same thing with three notes because it's three notes per string here. So you could do hammer-ons here and pick the next three. So it sounds like this. And just continue up three notes per string. Hammering on the first time and picking the next one. And then in reverse, do the same thing. Hammer on the first notes, pick the next three. Now it sounds like this with the metronome. Sounds like. Let me like it. Jamie Rock. I saw you were really rocking last night. Yeah, I was playing with my disco band, Disco Unlimited. Where I played bass in the band, and um, <laughs> it was a great night. We backed up some some great artists. Actually, we only backed up Tavares last night. Usually, we back up Franz Jolie as well, but we didn't last night. But we did um, Tavares. We played Heaven Must Be Missing an Angel with them, and they are such great guys. The three brothers. Tavares, unfortunately, one of them passed away last month. These guys have been together forever since the beginning, four brothers. And a lot of bands of today who's, who've been around for a while, usually some, sometimes there's none of the original members even in the band, but in Tavares, all of the guys were have been together, except for um, one of the brothers passed away, rest in peace, Ralph, his name Tavares. And now they have um, one of the guys, um, his name is um, Tiny, his son is actually singing as a fourth not quite a fourth member but he's singing a fourth part so it was really really great to jam with these guys really really top class um gentlemen and performers really great band thank you so much david belcher got a super chat my first super chat ever james gave me a super sticker earlier now i got a super chat <laughs> that is very very cool of you super chat and thanks for acknowledging that. That I got a thousand subs. That was a pretty cool achievement. It took a lot of work to get there. Two years of popping out these videos to get um, <laughs> over a thousand. And uh, that's really cool. It was a really cool achievement to get there. So thank you very much for the Super Chat. My first Super Sticker and Super Chat I got today. Very, very cool. So, all right. So we'll wrap this up soon. I think I just want to share like one or two more quick things here. And uh, bidding war. <laughs> Let the bidding war start. It is it is cool, and not many people mention this fact that. But I, I will say that you know YouTube does take thirty percent of all this. So just so you know, if you give like ten bucks, I'm gonna get probably seven bucks out of it. And YouTube's gonna get three, but it's their platform; they can do whatever they want. But I thought I'd just you know let you guys know that I wish I got all the the money. And uh, in the future, there'll be other ways that you can give me your money <laughs> where I'll get all of it. <laughs> so I'm just kidding with you guys. Thank you so much. That's very, very cool of you. And uh, like Jamie says, let the bidding war continue. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. So now I can buy some new guitar strings. All right. So let's see. This one last thing that we'll talk about. It's a really cool legato exercise. And... Um, and I learned it from Joel Hoekstra once again, where he, sh he showed me this something. He called it the snake legato. And it was a series of um, one, two, three, four, five notes, where it's like this. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> James, that is awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. Let me show you that um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I'm just going up the scale. 
And up, ready? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So it sounds like this. Actually, it would be in reverse. You can go. If it was that, it would go. It would go. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a good practice. And I got a super sticker and a super chat. Wow, I was only kidding about the bidding wars, but you guys are going at it. <laughs> and I'll buy you a coffee as well, for sure. Just let's hang out. Let's have a coffee sometime. And uh, Linky James, my, first, my second super chat and my second super sticker. So I'm retiring after today. <laughs> Thanks to you guys. <laughs> That is awesome. So, okay, very cool. And then there's one more part of that legato thing. It's a seven notes instead of being, and I want to just emphasize, this is not about speed at all. It's about just being clean with it. It's about starting and emphasizing each note. Playing it everywhere. And just playing it slow, but just kind of focus on just trying to get the notes out clean and sounding good. And you can imagine yourself playing as fast as Ingve, but at a at a slow tempo. And if you were the more you practice this and the faster you practice it clean, you'll eventually be like really, really fast and really, really clean. And I will too. <laughs> NYXLs today. Are those a certain string? It sounds like it. So, um, okay, so the seven notes, real quick, this is the last thing. The seven note one is more like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So instead of just going. Seven notes. I'm adding this last piece to resolve to see. So you got seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oops, hit the wrong note there. And switch strings. Do two strings at a time. Let's see.
<laughs> See, I turned the mistake into something cool. Well, maybe not. <laughs> and you really hear when you make a mistake here, so you hear like a clam in there. If you're playing up the scales like that. So that's a really cool practice. The, to practice it slow. I like the seven note one. And a lot of people, like in the 80s, they would just, you could actually mute if you hold the G string and the E string. And nothing's going to ring out here. Because there's nothing that could ring because you're holding, it's the, the string surrounding it that make all the noise. So if you, if you mute these two and you're holding this B string and I'm also muting the three fat strings down here, play ACDC, whatever that riff is. You can do that. Uh... Yeah. Same thing on the uh, E string. If I muted these two. Played on just the E string. I have to do something like that. It's hard, and your fingers get tired. <laughs> I'm such a pull off. So, that's it. Awesome. Well, hopefully you found this helpful today. And um, thanks for spending some time with me. It went over a little bit. Diodarios, those are guitar strings. Okay. My favorite brand. That's what I use forever. Diodario. NYXLs. I have to look into them. I use 10 gauge, but I'll check that brand. Got to go. I got to go too. I'll beat you to it. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank you guys for hanging out. David and Jamie. Jane, I don't know what to call you now. It's James or Jamie. And uh, Tom G, thank you so much for the super chats and for the um, super stickers. Those were a first for me, and that's really, really cool. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Thank you guys for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed this and found something and got something helpful for the, from this video. And um, I'll see you guys on Thursday night where I do my live on Facebook at uh, Facebook slash Jerry Jerry Band. And I'll see you right back here again next Sunday. If there's anything else that... Uh, that you like any other kind of lessons you think I could uh, probably help you out with or we could talk about. Oh, let me put this other guy. I'm talking to my guitar here. Let me know in the comment section if you enjoyed this, you know, what kind of legato riffs you like to play. And um, like I was saying, if there's anything for next week you'd like to go over, let me know. It'd be really, really fun to do. Not just helpful for you, but helpful for me as well. So remember, enjoy the rest of your Sunday and be cool, be kind. And be cherry. Love you guys. Have a great Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. See you next time. Peace.